New Extra Charge Hot and Iced Coffee from Dunkin' is made with 20% extra caffeine from green coffee extract because we could all use a little extra this year. Whether that's an extra boost, some extra boldness, or the drive to go the extra mile. We're extra ready for whatever comes our way and extra excited to take it on. Let's get it done with a medium extra charged coffee from Dunkin' for $2 with 20% more caffeine. And pair it with snackable stuffed bagel minis for an added all-day boost. Order ahead on the Dunkin' app. America runs on Dunkin'. Participation may vary. Limited time offer. There's a new Home Depot now open on Maurice Avenue in Masspath. And as home improvement projects go, this is a big one. Use the product locator on our app for an in-store map to find what you need fast. And check out our new pickup lockers. They make online shopping a breeze. Of course, one thing's not new, our everyday low prices. The Home Depot, now open near Maurice Avenue and Long Island Expressway in Masspath, and always open at homedepot.com. The Home Depot, how doers get more done. Thank you for visiting ChristopherMedia.net. What's up, everyone? Freddy the Pizza Man here, host of the Pizza Man podcast. Now joining forces with ChristopherMedia.net. Subscribe to the podcast on iTunes, the Pizza Man podcast. And, of course, find all the podcasts on ChristopherMedia.net. We talk Detroit sports. I bring on guests, uh, passions, opinions, uh, all for Detroit sports, and more. We even talk pizza. So thanks for tuning in and uh, spread the word. Christopher Media, let's make some noise. Welcome to Beer Nuts, a weekly excursion into the world of craft beer. Brought to you by MichiganBeerGuide.com. And now, here are the Beer Nuts. All right, everybody, welcome to another edition of Beer Nuts. Uh, I think this is episode 109. And uh, before we start this episode, I want to announce that the month of September is really going to be October in September. Because we're going to spend the entire month dedicated to German beer styles to uh, honor our Germans. So I hope uh, Chris dub in some good German music here because, you know, I why dry so far. It's all about Oktoberfest. And most people probably think Oktoberfest is in October, but it's actually in September um, if you go to the real one. And uh, so, hey, uh, we're going to celebrate the month of September with all different beer styles. And next episode will be our Oktoberfest, but tonight we're going to start with a good warm weather beer, and that's a style that was once given up for dead and has now uh, been rejuvenated. It's Gosa beers. Gosa. Um, and Dugout's going to dive into a little deeper into that topic, but before we do that, um, let's invite everybody to crack open a cold one. If you got a Gosa, fine, enjoy it. Great for a hot day. Um, and we've had some hot days here in Michigan. Indian summer's in full swing. Um, and if you don't have a Gosa, that's fine. Drink whatever you like. We're not pretentious. Uh, we just want to introduce more good people to more good beer. So let's uh, get ready to rumble here. And before that, uh, our traditional quote of the week. We did find a good one tonight, so it's a short but sweet one. And I will rattle it off right now. The quote of the week is, the problem with some people is that when they aren't drunk, they're sober. And that's by William Butler Yates. Thank you, William. I couldn't agree Amen more. Amen to that. Good job. Good job. <laughs> Amen. So, well, let's get right down to it. And, uh, Doug, out, this was kind of your uh, brainchild. This, uh, you know, we kind of discussed this together and came up with the German theme. But we thought that we'd start off with Gosu because it's a great quenchable, a thirst quenching style that's great for the hot weather that we're experiencing now and so why don't you uh take us into the world of gosa all right um so he has a pretty old style gosa is uh, originally from germany hence um its inclusion in this episode of uh october and september um it comes from goslar germany and it is typically brewed with at least 50 percent of the grain bill being malted wheat uh, the dominant flavors in Gosa include a lemon sourness or er an herbal characteristic and a strong saltiness, the result of either local water sources or added salt. Um, Gosa beers typically do not have a prominent hot bitterness uh, flavors or aroma. The beers typically have a moderate to lower alcohol content of 4 to 5 percent. Uh, a little interesting comment or, or tidbit here 
because of the use of coriander and salt, GOSA does not comply with the Rhein-Heitzgebot, uh, but it's allowed an exemption on the grounds of being a regional specialty. Um, it's originally first brewed in the 16th century and uh, became very popular in Leipzig that local breweries copied the style. And by the end of the 1800s, it was considered to be a local Leipzig um, uh, beer. You know, um, in, uh, and now we get to the part of where it goes almost goes away. Um, by the outbreak of World War II, um, last, there was one, just one last brewery uh, producing Gosa. Um, and when it was nationalized and closed in 1945, GOSA disappeared temporarily. And then in 1949, um, there was a brewery opened in Leipzig. And um, he, there was just a single brewery. But in this brewmaster, before his death in the late 1950s, he passed, passed the recipe to a stepson and um, uh, the, who later went on to... Um, uh, restore one of the uh, original breweries and um, so and it, it it's what I'm reading here it says briefly disappeared again in 88 but now it seems to be back in popularity definitely here in the US um, and quite a few breweries are um, producing ghosts so it wasn't hard to find although it's getting towards the end of the summer so you start to see them decline a little bit now, it's, um, if I'll go right into the first one I have, and, uh, and what I'll say, well, let me backtrack a second. Um, typical gosas don't have fruit, but that's part of the U.S. brewing community where it becomes a, a, a style that's very suitable to adding fruit and actually enhances the flavor. So the first one I'm going to do is uh, from New Holland Brewing. It's called Sour Inc., as in Sour Incorporated. I believe it's part of a series of, of ghosts from what I, what I saw. But this particular one is an apple rhubarb ghost. Uh, New Holland, we've reviewed quite a few of their beers before. They're out of Holland, Michigan. Uh, we're big fans. And on um, the back it says uh, apple tangy and crisp. So I pour this off. It's um, it's really a beautiful, clear, golden color. Um, the lacing is nice. There's just legs that run down the glass. Uh, the head dissipates fairly quickly on this. So the nose, I get some rhubarb off the nose. I definitely get some apple. I get like a tangy, sour smell to it. Um, typical of a lot of sour beers. And the first sip is, um, yeah, it's a bit, there's a bit of tartness to it. And um, not getting much rhubarb flavor, which may just end up being lost in the tartness, but I am getting apple. And, and it's definitely like a, um, like a Granny Smith apple where it's, where it's really kind of tart and uh, just a touch sour. But it, uh, the sourness dissipates really quick. It's not anything that lingers. It's got a really super light body to it. Yeah, overall, I mean, this is really, really good. Um, I thought the first sip, sip kind of slapped me a little bit with the with the tartness, but now that I'm used to it a little more, I'm I'm really enjoying this one. Um, I would definitely say this is a fantastic summer beverage, right here. Um, the acidity is in there, but it's not so acidic that it lingers, which makes it easier to drink it more than one. Uh, you can easily crush two or three of these, no no problem at all. And because they're lower alcohol, it doesn't um, really kick you as, as hard. Um, but, yeah, great, great beer. I would, um, if anybody's a fan of Gosa, I mean, there's, there's a touch of saltiness to it, but not overly salted. If anybody's a fan of Gosa, I would definitely check this one out. Absolutely. Sounds delicious. It, it is. Does. I think it just hit stores, too. I think this is a re recent release. I believe you're right. When I went to uh, look up some of the different reviews, there's not many. So this um, this particular review is not influenced by anybody else's writings. Um, and sometimes I do like to, to look up a, a beer um, and, and uh, before we do the show. 
and get a little info on it. So not a lot of info on this one, not a lot of reviews on this one, but um, in the next couple of weeks, you'll probably see a lot more of it. But I, I believe if it's hitting stores now, I'd definitely get it. Yeah, so that's great news for our listeners because this should be hitting shelves in the next few weeks. So look for it and snag it while it's hot. All right, I guess uh, that takes us to Greg over in Dearborn. So, Is that uh, me? Oh, wow. My turn. Yeah. It's been a while, Sparty, guys. Sparty survived last week. And so yeah, welcome State. back. Welcome back, Greg. Yeah, I, I, sorry I've been away for the last few weeks, but uh, work's been busy. But glad to finally get join you guys here on this great episode. So, uh, yeah, so my, my uh, Goza is from Elk Brewing Company out of Grand Rapids, Michigan. This is their uh, blueberry cucumber goza. Um, comes in a, uh, a 12 ounce can that I purchased up at uh, Merchant's Fine Wine here in Dearborn. And uh, so I poured it in the glass just a little while ago, and boy, it comes out like a uh, almost like a pinkish flavor here. All right, not flavor, pinkish color here. It almost reminds me of like a you know a freshly squeezed watermelon or something like that, and but on the on the smell as well, I get a lot of you know uh, you know tart blueberries and maybe a hint of cucumber. Um, really didn't uh, you know didn't have a head what's what you know to speak of, but uh, I see a little bu- little bubbles coming up from from the bottom below. It's really can't really see through it, so it's really cloudy. Beautiful looking beer. Let me get a taste out of it here. Mm. Oh my goodness! So. Right off the bat, you get that saltiness, as you expect out of a goza. You get a little bit of tartness out of the blueberry. And that cucumber, it's mixing with that blueberry, and it's almost giving me like a like a watermelon vibe. It's kind of strange. It's very delicious, mind you. Especially after a 93 degree day where I was working outside all day sweating you know what off. So this is a uh, you know super refreshing beer very delicious i mean it is this is really good i mean it comes in at five percent abv um god i mean this is this is really good man i could i could just sit sit here after work and and pound a whole six pack that these come in so yeah ex- excellent beer here i don't know if you guys have had this before but i definitely recommend and especially to everybody that listens to this podcast to, you know definitely look out for this in your local bottle shops it's fantastic Everybody still there? Sorry, I guess I had my mic muted. So, <laughs> Chris, edit that out. Good. Yeah, what I was going to say is, uh, yeah, it's a great. Sounds like a great style for you to enjoy after you know you work in the outdoors, out in the golf course. Uh, what a great beer to quench, you know, quench your thirst on a hot day and come home to one or two of these. And the other good thing about uh, the ghost style is they're not strong beers. You know, usually four to five, you know, three and a half to five percent maybe. So you can uh, crush a few of these and, you know, your your uh, review has uh, really uh, made me want one. So uh, <clears throat> sounds really tasty. Yep. And uh, at least from the uh, image here, it looks like it has some coriander in there. So it has a little bit of a you know, spicy kick to it so, along with the uh, the saltiness of it. So. Yeah, this is a uh, a must seek out beer from Elk Brewing Company. Good, well well done on their part from Grand Rapids. Well, and I I would assume they're probably sourcing local ingredients. Um, it's a lot of farm country around in that area, and um, definitely a lot of blueberries are grown around there. So, I would assume that they use some someone local uh, for for their for their fruit and their cucumbers. And uh, I saw that beer when I was shopping today, and I went. Oh, that's Greg's, and I almost, well, I had it in my hand, and I almost bought it. <laughs> not the biggest fan of cucumbers, but that's not because of the flavor. It's because of um, they don't sit well in my stomach. So, anyways, <laughs> that's TMI. And, TMI, uh, that's right. <laughs> I look forward to trying that one. I'm going to go back to the store and get some of that. Good deal. Um, the store I was at today had massive amounts of singles, and I was like, oh, this is great. I can get a bunch of ghosts here. All right, well, those two reviews are making me real thirsty, and I have to confess I did happen to crack open my first beer. Um, 
which was actually a gift from SAK and Andy, who I really wish Andy could have joined us because she's really good with sours and this would be a style that appealed to her. But uh, she wasn't available, but uh, so a shout out to her anyway because very kind of them. Uh, they were recently out in the West Coast in Las Vegas and the... Those of you that know me know that uh, I'm getting more and more comfortable in the sour world, but there's one fruit in particular that really uh, stands out for me. My my favorite beer fruit is guava. And this particular uh, offering that uh, they gifted me um, perfectly uh, in time for the show is Modern Times Fruitlands Sour Tropical Fruit Gosa. It's made with passion fruit, guava, pilsner, and malted wheat. So, uh, I've already uh, opened mine, and I'm going to pour a little bit more in. Um, not, you know, there's a nice, uh, healthy head that just disappears really quickly. Um, it's a light golden, light straw, you know, just slightly hazy in appearance. Um, and maybe I just have a nose for guava, but I can smell the guava on the aroma, which really appeals to me. I don't know why that's the, fr the fruit for me. It's just my favorite beer fruit so again taking another whiff and that's uh, that just stands out more than anything else to me so i'm i'm diving right in so it's a uh, slightly tart just like you would expect um the fruit is up front since there's passion fruit and guava i, I get more guava than passion fruit um but it's tempered by the you know the tart sour beer so it's like the base is the sour with the, the fruit really a comp you know really a makes that way more appealing to me. If this was just a, a plain gosa with no fruit, I would, uh, I wouldn't be nearly as uh, excited about it, but, um, uh, there's a, a perfect amount of fruit to balance this out. And it's just really delicious. I'm going to read from, uh, the label here. It says fruitlands is tart, fruity, and frighteningly delicious. The sour, salty base beer lays down the funky refreshment while a heavy dose of passion fruit and guava turns the whole thing into a wall-to-wall -wall tropical fruit fiesta. It's a marvelous mix of elements that collides with your mouth like a fruit-filled asteroid of flavor traveling at the supersonic speed of party. So, <coughs> excuse me. Hey, wait, say that again. A fruit-filled... Fruit-filled asteroid of flavor traveling at the supersonic speed of party. <laughs> My God, they must have been stoned when they wrote that. <laughs> uh, I would think so. Hey, it's they are from modern times. Is in San Diego, so uh, known to be a uh, 420 friendly city. So I wouldn't doubt that. But hey, I'm just uh, thrilled with this beer, uh, and I want to thank uh, Sak and Andrea for bringing this back for me because they know I love the guava beers and you know guava is just one element of uh, many in this um, you know the passion fruits there too and it really is a I always like to use the term concert but all these flavors come together nicely and I don't think they would be as good uh, separately as they are together and um, it does finish with that slight salty little saltiness which I really like about the ghosts. Um, I did a flavor test, I forget, uh, a couple of years ago. I forget even why I did this, but uh, we were doing a sensory test, and it turns out that I like salty s salty snacks and salty things a lot more than sweet things. So take it for what it's worth, but this is a, a really, really enjoyable beer. I mean, we can't get this here probably in Michigan, but if you got a friend on the West Coast... You'll soon have a friend in Arizona, um, but um, this is available in many markets other than our own, so fortunate to have uh, got one and uh, seek it out. It's a, it's, it's a delicious beer. It's a great, great representative of Gosa. Probably won't find many guava Gosas in Germany, but that's kind of what Doug out mentioned about the style. You know, we Americanize everything, and we kind of took an old forgotten style um and american craft breweries arguably have revived that style and maybe put a little of their own twist on it with some of these added fruits and flavors so really a pretty a good idea i have to give it to you credit to you doug for bringing this up the you know to make this a you know we're just at the perfect time of year where you know the hot weather is still around and it's it's still a great time to enjoy a gosa 
we probably should have done this a couple months ago, but glad we nipped it in the bud because uh, anybody can enjoy this. I mean, it, uh, and it's a great style for people maybe that are like you know afraid of sours, like I was for many years. Um, these are like the weighed in slowly, uh, you know, slightly tart ones. They're not, you know, repulsive, you know, way too sour, way too tart for most people's palates. So this is a great one, and uh, I think it's time to go back around the horn. So I'll turn it back over to Doug. All right. Um, beer number two. And I'm very excited about this one because I love everything that I've ever had from this brewery. This one is from Stillwater Artisanal Ales. Um, I've reviewed their um, their Saison before, which is just an outstanding beer, in my opinion. Um, they're listed as out of Maryland, but they're also gypsy brewers, and they brew wherever space allows them to. Um, so this particular one is, is called Ghost, Ghost of Gone Hopped, and it is listed as a Double dry hopped Leipzig Gosa. The uh, ABV is 4.6, and it's it's a uh, it's a seasonal beer. Obviously, not a lot of people go after the Gosas in the winter. Although, geez, some people get stuck on the style, and you'd, you'd be surprised because if the demand is there, the product will be there. Um, this pours a um, hazy golden color, and the head is really big and white and fluffy and then just sort of dissipates pretty quick um, and with a little bit of lacing around the edges the smell and this is what's interesting the smell when I opened this can and it was the equivalent of opening a package of hops and putting your nose in it the, the nose of the hops is that strong on this stuff I mean, it's crazy it's <laughs> um give that a sip and wow it's um it's a total reversal from what new holland was doing this stuff is tart and it's salty and it just kind of makes you like you know the warhead pucker <laughs> or a lemon pucker i mean it's just that strong of a of a um, of a sourness but like the rest of these it doesn't it doesn't um uh, linger very long. It, it dissipates pretty quickly. Uh, another big difference on this beer is I could feel like sort of a, um, a tannic coating going on my teeth. So uh, really a lot more acidic and tannic than the last beer was. Uh, there's there's um, some great fruit going on in here and definitely some citrus and it's not a fruited beer. So this is all done through the beer style and the hopping process, which um, uh, even before I get to the end of this, I'm going to say this is an amazing, amazing beer. Um, I'm getting um, a little more uh, grassiness and uh, maybe some pine and, and um, uh, uh, some earthiness to it, but this is just really like kind of green apple and uh, a little bit of funk to it, too. Um this is the best goes that I've ever had. I haven't had tons of them, but I've had a few. And this just knocks them all out of the water. I mean, if I had to, like, say, a scale, um, I probably would rank New Holland higher. Or, or I would have marked it higher before I tried this. But now that I've tried this, like, there's no comparison. None, none, none. Um, I would definitely seek this out and get it, even if you're not the biggest fan of ghosts. This stuff is awesome. Sounds to me like this is probably closer to the traditional Gosa that, you know, you said Leipzig, where you know, we have the German style Gosa. And uh, maybe you know, your description makes me, you know, curious enough to try it um, since you speak highly of it. Um, when you said that the, the, you know, the real big pucker, you know, that kind of scared me away. But then when you said that uh, you kind of came around on it and say, wow, this is something you really got to try. So, uh, good review on it because it makes me want to try that out and i think it'd probably be good education just to see you know hey where did this style start from and then before the americans got a hold of it and put all kind of these great fruits in it but so yeah, yeah it sounds it's like not the OG. It, 
it's not an inexpensive beer by any means. I mean, I've got a 16 ounce can that was just a little shy of five dollars. So you're looking at a four pack cost, you know, and it's a single. Maybe they added a few nickels and dimes to the price, but you're looking at a, a four pack cost that's well over fifteen dollars, probably in the sixteen to eighteen dollar range on this beer. But um, anything I've ever had from Stillwater has been well worth the cost. Absolutely, yeah, they have a great reputation, and again, for me, I would like to just experience like the pure Gosa style, you know, without, uh, before it's, I guess, goes into a metamorphosis, um, other brewers' interpretations of what they'd like it to be. Well, and this has undergone a metamorphosis because of the double dry hopping uh, of it. You typically wouldn't really dry hop a Gosa or go for any kind of hops but the interesting thing about what they've done with this recipe is that the hops become more of the citrus and outside of the nose if it weren't knowing that it was a double dry hopped beer that this would this would be more like a um, almost like a lemon a lemon tart drink like a really tart lemonade oh well, i guess some brewers use fruit others use hops but and I believe they, that's that's kind of a big trend with some um, uh, some pretty forward thinking brewers, um, and I'm, I've, I saw that this week with um, uh, I believe it was Firestone Walker had a beer out and listed all the flavors on it that were achieved with no fruit but hops. So there was mango, there was pineapple, and. Um, and there was grapefruit, and it, they nailed it on the head, you know. Well, as a home brewer yourself, you, you've been able to do that with certain hop combinations. I know the Mandarina hop is one that you've used uh, successfully to do that. So, yeah, that's one of the great things about uh, hops is discovering, you know, what fruits you can pull out of a hop. All right, good stuff. Uh, I guess we're back to Greg. Greg. Hey, uh, I, I, I mentioned Boy, this a little quick. earlier. Good job with the uh, uh, Sparty pulled one out, and both of our teams uh, struggle a little bit, but we're victorious. So hopefully hey, we'll this take, week will be better. We'll take the W, right? That's Absolutely. right. We'll take the W. So <laughs> anyway, uh, let's uh, move on to your next beer. Okay. Uh, so I started on the west side of the state of Michigan, and I'm moving back over to Pretty much the east side of the state of Michigan from Ann Arbor, Michigan. This is Holmes Brewery. This is their Dub Plum. And they they call this a double-fruited uh, goza with plum, uh, brewed with kosher salt and coriander. And this was a uh, brewery-only release, as much as all their stuff is. They really don't do any distribution. Pretty small brewery. But they're doing some excellent things out there. And I am a member. I can, uh, I guess, gloatfully say, say so. I uh, was able to stand in line uh, almost two weeks ago for this release. And um, so I uh, poured out in a Holmes glass here. It's uh, absolutely what you can imagine, like purple, <laughs> purple haze. Can't see a single thing through it. Um, just absolutely gorgeous. The small compact white bubbles on the top of the head here. It didn't last very long. Well, the nose of it, a uh, lot of, you know, tart plums. Uh, you can get a little bit of that salt out of there. Uh, almost, you know, it, oddly enough, it comes out maybe a little buttery, <laughs> which is, it's weird to say, but that, yeah, that's what it comes out to be. So, so let's get a, a nice glass, a nice taste out of this glass here. Hmm. Uh, more of the same. Oh, wow. Really tart plums. Very salty. Um, very creamy, even though that, you know a lot of their sours are, uh, in the past have had like, lactose added, but this is this does not have any lactose added to it, but it comes off really creamy. Has, a, like I said, a nice tart plums to it. Uh, this is uh, another one of those easy-drinking uh, 5.6 ABVs, uh, you know, uh, Goza's. Um, I mean, you can you can like like the one before that I talked about from Elk Brewing. You could just pound these all day long. This comes in a 16 ounce can, and they had it on draft not too long ago. 
Oh, but this, I mean, they're just killing it out there at homes, and I've been really impressed with everything they put out, uh, including all their IPAs, but that's another another subject right there, but absolutely gorgeous beer. It's hard to even, you know, fathom that this is <laughs> this is even a beer when you're drinking it, but, you know, it's just, uh, yeah, good stuff. Cheers to homes. They're doing some great stuff, and, you know, much continued success for them, and Hopefully they can uh, maybe just get a little bit bigger over the years. So we'll see what happens. Yeah, they are killing it. And I remember when this beer was released, I was kind of bummed I was out of town uh, in D.C. So I missed that release. But uh, I've heard great things on that one and pretty much almost everything they're producing. And uh, I know I talked about a guava beer, but uh, uh, a few months ago I was able to get a, a great guava beer that they produced out there. Oh, their guava sherbet. Yeah, that was yep. a killer. And uh, I think we may have even reviewed that on the show. But, yeah, I mean, anybody's in southeastern Michigan, you know, seek these guys out. Um, they also are known for a great kitchen. Um, they have Asian cuisine, uh, Korean yep. influence. Yep. Um, if that's your thing, uh, by all means, give these guys a shot. Uh, you know, visit. You won't be disappointed. You'll, you'll probably have to wait to get in. If you're there in a peak time, but uh, worth the wait. They're doing great things. Beer and food. Beer and food, absolutely. All right, well, thanks for sharing that. I'm going to move on to my... Anybody else have a comment? Well, yeah, I was going to say they uh, pretty much have a uh, Midas touch for anything they brew. And uh, nothing lasts very long. All All their releases are gone almost immediately. Um, and then they reserve some for the pub. At the um, Michigan Brewers Guild Summer Beer Festival, they were the first brewery on Saturday that completely ran out of beer. And you could see the line at their place is always 10, 15, 20 deep and four or five wide. And that's the way it went all day for homes. So, <laughs> <laughs> and for a good reason, they had some of the best beer. At, that I had at the fest, and that wasn't even the stuff people were waiting in line for. And I'm like, I'll take whatever you give me from you guys. And um, uh, so i got to make my way over there yet. They open it a little later. I tend to be in Ann Arbor during the day, so unfortunately they're, they're closed when I'm there and can get there. So I'm going to have to make a special trip out there. And it's worth a trip. And just one more thing, uh, HOMES, the acronym stands for the Five Great Lakes. Huron, Ontario, Michigan, Erie, and Superior. So that's what HOME stands for. Very good. But they also stand for excellent beers and food. So definitely pay them a visit. So we're going to move on to our last beer of the show and uh, save the one of the iconic uh, ghosts of, of uh, I know, uh, Greg, you just said you were going from the west coast of Michigan to the east coast of Michigan. Well, I am going from the west coast of the country with modern times to the east coast to South Carolina to Westbrook Brewing Company, the uh, coveted key lime pie goats from Westbrook. So uh, this one I have saved. Popped open a new one. Ooh, I'm getting a really big uh, foamy Snow White head. Let this chill a little bit. Or, uh, let let the, the head uh, dissipate. So uh, before I dive into this, I'm going to go ahead and read from the can. It says, Key Lime Pie Gosa. You want some pie and Gosa? Well, here it is. Our classic Gosa infused with the delicious flavors of Key Lime Pie. Made extra special just for you. So, sour ale brewed with spices and with natural flavors added. 4% ABV. It's got a nice picture of key limes and a piece of pie on them. So, here we go. I've had this before and I know uh, I'm know i in for a treat. So, <laughs> as soon as you go to detect the aroma, you don't even have to hold this, but maybe six inches from your nose and you just smell... You know, major a fresh lime flavor. Just like he just sliced open a fresh lime. It's 
you don't you don't smell anything else. It's the lime is uh, pre- predominant and, and overpowers everything else, and that's not a bad thing at all. So let's go ahead and uh, take a sip of this. Oh man, nope. You got tart. It starts with a nice fresh lime flavor, and then it moves into the tartness. Um, then you you can also detect a little graham cracker in there. It's a, kind of the base, and then it finishes off. Um, there's not a whole lot of salt. Taste it again and look for the salt. Maybe maybe a touch on the very uh, very end finish, but. Well, I think what's great about this beer is that you can also taste the crust in the key lime pie. Um, so, but uh, predominant, you know, predominantly overwhelming, you know, tart lime flavor. You know, not not a obnoxious tart, but a you know, a strong but not obnoxious tart. But you know, one that you would expect with lime because lime is a tart fruit. I love lime. I love key lime pie, and I love this beer. It's uh, there's no way I could have done this episode uh, and slept at night if I didn't uh, include this beer, and I was so happy that I had one can available because I would have had to have been calling around and pulling in some favors. It's a it's a favorite. It's not very expensive beer, but you know you have to live in the market that it's in. Uh, I know Ross, uh, who's on the podcast often, uh, he often hooks me up with this. Um, that's probably where this can came from. Um, but it's fantastic, and if you're in their distribution footprint down south, usually, uh, and you have access to this beer, grab yourself a couple four packs. One, one, one won't be enough, I promise you. It's absolutely, I think it's the favorite ghost I've ever had for me. But um, not to slight anything else that's been tasted tonight, but this is this is a, a home run. Um, Sounds delicious. <clears throat> key lime yeah, pie goes to. Citrusy, sour, delicious, it says right on the can, and it's mm. all that. It sounds amazing. I mean, anything Westbrook I've ever had is fantastic, so I know this is going to be just as good. So, And uh, I might add that Westbrook also makes a uh, uh, regular ghost, non-fruited. It's also a very, uh, very good uh, seller. Um, but for me, I love the lime. So, you know, if you ever had uh, key lime pie, you know, that little... That nice tartness that the key limes have a little bit more tartness than the regular limes you buy at the grocery store. And uh this is uh man, this is this is a treat. So I think it's a great way to cap off this episode. a uh, great way to honor the ghost of style which is all but dead and has now been, you know, revived and is thriving and and I'm glad that we rediscovered this style. And I hope that maybe there's some other styles out there that maybe uh, have been forgotten and will be rediscovered again. Because it's, uh, it's what's great about the craft beer world. There's so many uh, different flavors and styles. And next week we're going to go into Oktoberfest, which will be like night and day compared to what we're drinking today. But it'll also be another great adventure into the world of German beers. And uh Excited about this month, you know. Uh, October and September is going to be a good one. Absolutely. All right. Any final comments, anybody? Any any beer news this week? Dug out anything? Hmm. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> I can edit <laughs> that. I have just been busy and traveling, so I haven't really. Yeah. Uh, the only thing I can think of is I know that Miller Coors just laid off a, a whole bunch of people. So, you know, as uh, at least Doug and I, you know, used to be in the industry. So hopefully none of our old friends were affected. But, you know, it's always sad when you see, you know, good good beer people, uh, you, know, you know, out on the street, you know, having to try, try to find another job. So my heart goes out to anybody that might have been impacted by those macro beer uh, uh, reorganizations and uh, that's the only beer news I can think of and it's not good news but um, you know hey what I will say to that is hopefully some of those people can go out and maybe find work with a a small independent brewer and uh, you know support your local brewery that's what we're all about here and uh, you know uh, again uh, my heart goes out to the people that have been impacted by these but you know, large brewers are sometimes heartless, and 
thinking about the bottom line. I mean, everybody's in business to make a profit, but I think uh, most of the, our craft beer, independent craft brewers are uh, in it for the passion and uh, maybe have a little bit more compassion for their employees and will do anything they can to, to keep them around. So that's uh, just my last message of the show is just to support your local independent craft brewers. You know, that's what we've always been about here. Uh, and that's what we've done tonight. I think uh, every one of our beers that we tasted is uh, from a small independent craft brewer. So cheers to the brewers that make us great beers. Mm-hmm. Keep hey, us- John, I have to admit I'm, I'm behind listening to podcasts, but you, have you mentioned the new uh, Dragon's Milk uh, rebranding and uh, coconut and banana released uh, here No, in no, please, please share that with us. Yeah, so uh, New Holland, I guess... Uh, Decided that their packaging needed a little upgrade, uh, at least for Dragon's Milk, and uh, so they gave themselves a brand new, uh, you know, look on the uh, packaging slash bottles, and it's kind of like uh, they, they're focusing a lot on the dragon itself. With a, at least the one I'm looking at picture-wise here is big, you know, white uh, dragon that we've seen in the past, and it's kind of a scaly-looking, you know, background, but uh, um, certainly a, a fresh update to their uh, Dragon's Milk uh, line, which I, I don't think was has been too old, if uh, memory serves me right. I mean, it's only been, I don't know, maybe uh, at least five, six years, maybe maybe a little bit more. I'm, maybe I'm, I'm wrong, but uh, they also mentioned that uh, their new uh, variant coming out here, I believe they said in the September, was a banana coconut uh, flavored uh, Dragon's Milk. So I'm definitely looking forward to that. I don't know how you guys feel about that, but uh, to me that sounds fantastic. So. Oh man, I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, absolutely. So. I remember reading about that. I did not know about the rebranding and the packaging. So thanks for sharing that. Yeah, not my, that my pleasure. But banana coconut, man, there's something a little bit different. That's uh, you know, that could go that could go a lot of different ways. That's a, uh, I'm just going to reserve judgment till we can taste it. I'm excited absolutely. to try it. I don't know if they have an official date when that's going to be in store shelves, or at least uh, starting here in Michigan, but uh, uh, I know they said something about near the end of September, so I guess uh, look for that around then. Well, New Holland does have a, a, a pretty large distribution footprint. Hopefully uh, this variant will be spread out to other markets, but we know here in Michigan that we'll have a shot at it, so I'm certainly excited to give that one a try. Yes. All right, well... I guess that about does it. Any final uh, final comments? Doug, got anything? Uh, ready to go to uh, Munich next week? Yeah, ready to go to Munich. Uh, strap on your lady or hosen. Uh, get your funny hats on with the feathers in them like your grandpa wears. And let's get ready for Oktoberfest next week. And uh, Chris, uh, when you're dubbing stuff in, don't forget the Eins zwei Dry Safa next week. Get that queued up. My favorite uh, (laughs) Oktoberfest song. (laughs) So, well, thanks for listening, everybody. Uh, September, October in September is underway. So look for Oktoberfest next week. Uh, I think we got Box and Double Box the final week, the following week. And then uh, the last week of the month, we're actually going to do authentic German beers from Germany. And we're going to try to focus on some of the styles that we don't cover uh, over these uh, f- next three weeks so it's going to be a journey through the whole trip of Germany Germany so I that's why I dry so far <laughs> right so um, normally we go to Mexico City we'll be going to Munich next week but for now as they say in old Mexico City AMF if you like this show please tell a friend Please follow us on Twitter and like and share us on Facebook by searching for Christopher Media. You can subscribe to all ChristopherMedia.net shows for free on ChristopherMedia.net. Please make sure to rate and comment on all your favorite Christopher Media shows. Thank you in advance for supporting Christopher Media by clicking on the PayPal button and by clicking through to all the sponsors who support ChristopherMedia.net. Thank you for visiting ChristopherMedia.net and thank you for listening. Thank you for visiting ChristopherMedia.net. Wendy's Baking.
Baconator is the ultimate bacon cheeseburger that puts all other cheeseburgers to cheeseburger shame. And now we're bringing that same big bacon energy to shake up and wake up your breakfast with the Breakfast Baconator. Stacked with a fresh cracked egg, sausage, cheese, and bacon. And right now, you can get a free Breakfast Baconator with purchase in the Wendy's app. So get the Wendy's and always be Baconating. We got you. Offer available at participating U.S. Wendy's for a limited time during breakfast hours only. Offer must be redeemed via the app. Account registration required. Discovery Plus is the greatest collection of real-life entertainment on the planet. 55,000 episodes from networks like TLC, HGTV, and tons more. Woohoo! Discovery Plus. Stream now. Stream what you love.